welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Of course. To start off, um, I'd love to just hear a little bit about you, where you're from, where you are right now. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure how much you know, but I am from Calgary, Canada. And I am actually in New Jersey right now. No, normally before Corona, I, um, I lived between New York and LA and mostly was in LA, but now that Corona happened, um, we, me and my fiance, we got a house in New Jersey for, for the year. So it's kind of a different pace, but I put a studio in the basement. It's dope. <laughs> so I've been working here. Oh, that's really cool. And what first sparked you to get into the music industry and how has your career path changed over time? Um, what first sparked me? I mean, I, I, like I've been doing this my whole life. So I really, you know, I think it was just for sort of an innate love for music when I was, you know, like five or six and started singing and doing vocal lessons and, you know, just, you know, kind of all kind of started from there. So I don't really know that I've known another way of life. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, so it's changed. Well, it's changed a lot right now. I mean, I started as an artist. Um, basically, you know, I, when I left my label in 2000, I think it was 14, um, at Island Def Jam, I, I just started, you know, I sort of wanted to just write for other people. And I had never done that at that point. And, um, obviously I've written my whole life for my own project, but I had never written for other people and I just loved it. And I really loved the idea of developing, you know, artists and stuff. I don't think I knew how much I loved it until I really started doing it. Um, yeah. And then it sort of just kind of, you know, became, you know, I guess life is that way. Sometimes when you don't sort of plan for something, it just sort of happens. So I just started naturally writing with a lot of um, like, you know, artists that I, you know, eventually started developing and would do their entire projects. And I just really love it. Was, so was there anything else specific that geared you towards like a specific direction in your career? So made you want to do more of what you're doing now than just singing uh, songs for yourself? Well, yeah, I think for me, I'm the kind of person that sort of just likes to go with where like my heart takes me. So I think at the end of the day, like this, um, like, I love this. And I think in terms of doing an artist project, like, it's something that I really want to do still, like, another project, but it would kind of want to be, like, a side alias project. So, um, and to me, I, I have to, you know, being an artist is, like, that's, I would have to spend all my time on that, and I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now. So I feel that it's just been nice to spend so much time, you know, working on pro artists that I love and, and, and be able to contribute to their projects. Definitely. And what has been one of your favorite projects that you've worked on? I know you must you work with a lot of incredible artists, but if you had to pinpoint one like memorable project, what would that be? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I'll mention Benny just because obviously we, we, we had Super Lonely this year, which was awesome. And then also, um she has her album coming out in a month so yeah. that's exciting and what is the process like in terms of songwriting and where do you find inspiration especially when helping other artists um, write their music what's that process like i mean for me it's all about it's like a therapy session you know like for that's you know i i recently started like a mental health podcast as well and that that sort of reflects on what i feel like a songwriting session is a lot of the time it's just really going in with a certain emotion and hoping to have chemistry with the person you're writing with and if you do it's like the most magical experience and obviously if you're writing alone then it's more about you know being able to sort of purge out the feelings that you're feeling into music right yeah definitely i definitely heard your podcast and i really enjoy it would oh, you be able to tell <laughs> Would you be able to tell CFA a little bit about your podcast and what you talk about? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So I, my, it's basically something that I started because, called the green room because basically sort of a back backstage um, look into like the process of, or anything really a backstage look into, you know, an artist's life or a songwriter's life. And that's where it stemmed from. And then mental health has always been something that has been really important to me so I um 
I just, you know, I, I decided to partner with the Jed Foundation, which is a nonprofit for mental health, and she is the music, which is Alicia's Pieces um, nonprofit, basically supporting females in music. Um, and we basically came together with this concept, and we, you know, we've now, I think, just done our 10th episode. And, wow. you know, obviously, given that it's, um, quarantine and stuff like that like it you know that was more reason to start just because mm-hmm. obviously in the very beginning people were isolated and that was something that definitely um has been wearing on people's mental health and continues to do so so I feel like it's something that's really um I really ha- love having and it's become something that's really been cathartic even for me to experience and talk to different people and basically the platform is um me and an artist and um a therapist which has been really cool so we actually have a a trained therapist on every episode which you know because you've seen it so yeah (laughs) no for sure that's not super awesome like you said especially during these times people are trying to find inspiration online and trying to listen to podcasts i know that i've listened to so many podcasts especially like when the pandemic started and quarantine started so that's so awesome that you had that outlet and you're helping others. What has been a challenge specifically being a woman in the industry? I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you know, you, you go through so much. I mean, I always think you have to just work, you know, 20 times harder. I mean, as a female artist, it's like the constant feeling of being objectified rather than just being respected for your talent or having to, you know, for an industry like ours to have so much being relied on the way you look, you know, and then, and then obviously being threatened to like, you know, be too friendly to a guy where it's like, oh, they might think you're like flirting with them or something. And it's just like the, all these things to think about. And then on like, you know, just on the business side front, you know, same thing. It's like being respected because you, again, it's like such, a, it's an, we're objectified so much more than men. And I think it's hard to like, yeah. okay, you have to dumb it down when it's, you shouldn't have to really, you know what I mean? You should just yeah. be respected for, for what you're providing, whether it be your talent or your, your intelligence or whatever it is like your asset like every asset that you have um shouldn't have to be defined by like you know a man or the way you look or whatever it is right it's like so that to me is or you know it's like again it's like an age thing it's like you know it's too young too old like all this stuff and it's just constant battles of like not being able to be seen for like just what you're good at and I think it's fighting that um until people finally see it which is like shouldn't be as hard as it really is I mean yes it's gotten better I think over the years but it's just not I don't like it's nowhere near where I think is how it should be right so no of course well you are a successful artist so (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) what is the best advice that you've been given and this could be any piece of advice um, that you've taken over the years or Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, it's really about, I think, for just to be able to have your own identity and not worry about what people say or, you know, constantly be comparing yourself to people. I think you just have to, you know, make your own path and feel great about what you're trying to achieve and not feel like, you know, because somebody else is achieving something more what you feel like you should have that you should have that too it should just be like you're your own person and there's only one you so you have to do the best at whatever you can do right so it's like I think that's really important and then I think drive is really important because this industry more than most and you know anything in entertainment it's like you know mostly you're gonna hear no no you know so you have to be prepared to have a thick skin is is there anything that you wish you could have done differently is there anything that I would have done differently? Um, I think, honestly, uh, there's probably a lot of things I would have done differently, just in like minor things, just yeah. consider having the knowledge. But in terms of just like life, I don't really see it that way. I think everything happens mm-hmm. for a reason. I think we all have a reason to get to where we are. So if I had done anything differently, I wouldn't be here today. So I kind of feel like no, but then at the same time, yes, if that makes sense. Because I think yeah. it's like little things, you know, like would have I reacted mm-hmm. to certain situations differently or would I've done things? Yeah, probably, but nothing like on a large scale really. Yeah, no, I definitely believe things happen for a reason. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And 
do you mind talking a little bit about um, some of the projects that you've worked on in the past or pieces that you've produced? Um, so working with different artists. Like anybody specifically or? Um, Noah Cyrus, is there anything that you would want to highlight? I mean, I, you know, we've been working together for like seven years now. So it's just like, you know, I feel that that's a really good example of just being able to sort of grow with somebody that you're working with and being able to sort of help, um, you know, guide their vision or, or be able to steer it alongside their, like together, right? And I think when yeah. it's like a good example of having a good creative partner. Um, and I just think it's amazing, like the, like all the different sort of ways that we've been able to create together, whether I, you know, it's vocal production or songwriting or executive production. Like to me, it's like, I feel like it's really cool being able to sort of talk about what the next sort of Mm -hmm. thing is for her and I love the, the obviously her going and doing July and things like that like it, yeah. it was so fun creating like the whole you know story behind that and all that good stuff yeah no for sure and when you were getting into the industry did you have a mentor or anyone that you kind of looked up to or was inspired by um yeah I mean totally I think like Quincy Jones and mm -hmm. In terms of these kind of things, like totally like Quincy Jones and like um, Michael Jackson, like that process is obviously some, and like Tommy, actually funny enough, like, well, I know Tommy Mottola and Mariah Carey were like dating, but I feel like it's funny because like I was such a Mariah fan. So like, well, I will say more, more Mariah, but I love the idea of like, like knowing like the backstory of like the partnership and how something happened and like the creation of like like Motown and stuff and how that was all created with like Barry Gordy and Al Green and Donny Hathaway and um, like, um, like Lionel Richie and stuff. Like it was so cool how it was such a community, you know, like and yeah. that, that's what. I Do you think that later on you're going to create songs for yourself to sing again? Oh um, yeah, I totally am. I'm actually thinking about doing that soon, but I'll, I'll have a yeah. side project. I want to, I'll name it something else. So you may not know it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I guess that creates more mystery. <laughs> Is there anything that you're currently working on right now that you're able to talk about? Um, I mean, I'm working on so many things right now. Yeah. It's crazy. My, my brain feels like scrambled eggs. Um, I can say that like, obviously finishing up the Penny record is really exciting. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, you know, that's dropping really soon. So that's, you know, literally just, wrap that up a couple weeks ago um i'm working on the my little pony movie doing the music for that which yeah. is exciting um and yeah just a ton of stuff i mean i like some stuff i obviously can't talk about but like just you know yeah, of course um, yeah. but yeah i mean it's just been it's been it's on in some and partially it's just because my brain is actually scrambled <laughs> so i'm like oh my god yeah. working on too many things. but it's been yeah, really great a lot going actually, on really like weirdly busy great career year which is obviously weird to say given what's going on in the world but it's also like personally been a really reflective year and I think it's been really good to sort of see things a certain way you know and and it's it's um brought out a different kind of creativity which I think is also you know interesting so I definitely I definitely feel that there's a major shift happening in 2020 I'll say that much yeah I feel like a lot of people are definitely, there's a lot of surprises to come in 2020, 2021. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, to wrap up, I know you're super busy. Um, so what advice would you want to give aspiring songwriters and artists in general? I think mostly like it's just to stay driven and stay motivated by like, staying passionate about, you know, what you're doing, regardless of what people say and how people, you know, don't take people too seriously in terms of like negativity and stuff. Like you just have to keep going and, I'll, and just kind of just stay on your path and try to like not get distracted. And, and I think um, just try, try not to like follow trends too. I think that can be really um, dangerous sometimes because you think oh well this is cool so I'm not gonna you know like I think you have to just follow your gut as much as possible yeah thank you for saying that of course
Well, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. I'm really excited to see what's next for you. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, bye. Bye, have a good day.